Hello and welcome to the Jonas.net. My name is Donald Jonas. Today I'm going to do a tutorial video on setting up a Linux file server in a Windows environment. Hopefully you had a chance to watch my two previous videos, one on DNS and one on DHCP. Uh, the two combined was configured to set up dynamic DNS in a Windows environment. Today um, this file server that I'm using is going to be CentOS version 5.5 based upon Red Hat Enterprise Edition, free to download from CentOS.org. So let's begin. Here I have a very generic installation of CentOS. And you will need to download a few components before we begin. I've taken the liberty of doing this ahead of time as a time saving measure. So you're going to go to Applications, Add Remove Software, bring up the Packet Manager, Go to servers, go to server configuration tools, and we're going to add the Samba server configuration tool. Basically, it's the graphical environment for configuring file sharing. Click on that, close out of it, and Windows File Server, which is the Samba protocol, which is what we're going to use. Samba is the protocol we use to share in the Windows environment. Click apply, it'll download the components it needs. It's pretty intuitive. It will install it. At the end, if it's your first time using this, you'll probably get a certificate prompt to import it for the repository for CentOS. Just click yes, and then you can just close out of it, like so. Now that we have the components needed in order to make a file server using Linux, we need to do the configuration. So let's begin clicking on System, Administration, Users and Groups, and now we need to first let's create a group um, let's create a group and let's call it well usually groups that need to be isolated that keep confidential information is like the legal department okay and the legal department usually stays within their own you don't want like a multimedia or engineering seeing these legal documents so we're going to click OK now that we've created a group called legal, let's create a user. And let's add a user. And this user, we're going to call him Donald, which is me. And my full name. I'm not going to, well, my last name's kind of obvious. It's thejonas.net. That is my last name. So I guess I could put that on there too. And password. Well, should always use a complicated password. And as you can see, it'll create a home directory for me, much like it does uh, in documents and settings in Windows or your home folder in Mac. It's the same principle. That'll actually be your personal network drive when we're finished. Okay, so this user is created. I created myself as a user. Recreated the legal group. I would need to add myself to the legal group. There we go. So now I have access to my naturally to my root home directory and to the legal directory which we will be creating. Close out of this. And now let's go into administration, server settings, and Samba. Samba is the protocol we're going to use to communicate everything. All right, under preferences, you're going to have server settings. We're not going to do anything here, but I'm just going to make a point of bringing it up. Uh, there's really not much to do here. If you're going to connect to a Windows environment, most likely it's going to be having a domain controller. And under security, you can set up authentication through ADS, Active Directory Services, set up your Kerberos realm. So when you change your Windows PC um, password, It'll also change it here on the Linux server. That's a bit of a complicated configuration, which I'm not going to get into today. I don't think it's really necessary for what we're doing. And in most cases, it's really not even necessary to do what we're doing. The default configuration will work fine for most people. So you can just pretty much leave it as the default. That's just my opinion. So let's just add our Samba user. You have to be added as a Samba user in order to file share on the network and add user naturally we're going to pick one we've already created and we've only created one which is me and here is an option to use your windows credentials or you can just use the 
credentials you created within Linux, which is what I'm going to do. I have to keep everything the same. Simple. Don't complicate things. So, it's the same credentials I used when I created the account within Linux. And there I am, now added as a Samba user. Next, we will have to create the directories that we're going to map out as network drives. So let's just go into computer, file system. We're going to need to create a parent directory so it, you know files don't get too scattered across your hard drive. Let's create a folder and call it, just call it network. All right. And within network, you guessed it, we're going to create a folder called legal. And naturally, you know, you would want to point your backups to the network drive. That way it'll back up all the folders you create in there as far as, you know, network drives. And naturally, of course, you would want to always back up your home folder because that's where Donald's, or in my case, yours or whoever's personal network drive will be. So basically, those are the two things you really want to target. It will be the home directory, and in this case, the network directory. I'll make another video on that and how to do backups within Linux. So, there is the legal drive. Now we need to set permissions on this legal drive. And we're going to leave it as root. And we're going to change the group to, you guessed it, legal. And I usually open this up a little bit. Giving these users the rights to create and delete within this drive so they can do their job and apply permissions. So the only person, people that can access this folder, which will be their network drive, will be the root and the people in the legal group. Okay, so we can close out of this. We have our directories created. And now we need to add the share. And we're gonna browse. And where you have the two dots, the two periods, that's the root. And we're gonna scroll down to, you guessed it, network and the legal drive and we're going to make it writable and we'll make it visible you can make it invisible by unchecking it obviously and if somebody wants to be able to browse to this um, directory on your windows network they're not going to see if it's invisible invisible is like when windows and you add the dollar sign after a share to make it hidden like an administrative hidden share this is the same concept and for what we're doing today, we're going to make it um, visible. And you can put a description in there. Access will be for Donald. Now, obviously, when you create users in this Linux environment, the ones you want to be able to file share with you will add them to the Samba server configuration. And their names will all populate into here. So as you create directories, you will check the appropriate people to the appropriate drive as you go along. It's pretty self-explanatory. You can create folders where everyone has access. That's not probably not a good idea. It's not very good security practice. And that's pretty much it. So we've created a user. We created a group. We created a directory. We shared it out to that group. And we set up a Samba user and a Samba share. I know it sounds like a lot, but it's really not. Now, the only thing we have to do left here is to start the service. Go under System, Administration, Server Settings, Services. Scroll down to where you see SMB, which is short for Samba. Check on it. It is running already. We're going to save it so it always starts and close out of it. So now on your Windows PC, I have Windows 7 here that I'm using, which is an excellent distribution. Let me just bring that up. Under the control panel, we'll change it to all control panel items. And under Credential Manager, you really should be using Windows 7 if it's a Windows environment. It is, you know, it's the best product I feel they've ever made. And, you know, XP and uh, uh, other versions, they're not going to be supported much longer. So this is definitely a product you want to look into using. And we're going to add the credentials. The name of this server, the host name. Just real quick here, I'll show it to you. Is Linux and if you did your DNS and DHCP properly you should have no problem finding the name of the network if you have questions on that look at my other tutorial videos to keep it all lowercase and the username was Donald and the password was 
that up. All right, and that's it. You want to do this ahead of time. You want to, if you're going to image a PC, you want to throw, and you've already created a user account on the Linux server, put the credentials in. I mean, they can change the Windows passwords as much as they want, but it's not going to change on the Linux server. Unless you have, of course, the open LDAP running. But this is a great way of doing it. Or, you know, if you browse to it, it'll prompt you to authenticate. I like to do it ahead of time on the PC. So that's pretty much it. Now we will just make an attempt to... Uh, Map all the drives. Bring over my run command for my Windows 7 PC. And there it is. It already sees it. Linux. And there are the two folders. We'll map out the legal drive as the Z drive. Excellent. And the Donald drive, which would be my, my personal network drive, as the H drive. Try to keep everything standardized as much as possible. And there we go. There is my personal network drive. If you click on it, you're going to see some hidden folders because I have hidden folders being shown. Um, so you don't confuse the user. You can just delete these. There we go. And let's do a quick test. Legal folder test. And see they're all writable. How nice is that, huh? And only people who have access to these directories are the user I created, Donald, and the people in the legal group. And of course, naturally, they will be right here located on your Linux server. There's network, there's legal, there's test. And under home, there's Donald, and there is test. And that's pretty much it. Everything is working good. Users don't know if you're using a Linux server in the background or a Windows server or an XServe. They just want to get their files and they want things to be safe. This is an excellent way of doing it. It's free. There's no licenses involved. Um, there's no cost for the operating system. It's an excellent solution, especially in these cost-saving times. And if you're really good with the Linux or as you grow and develop, there's more advanced features you can set up. One is called Security Enhanced Linux. And that's right here, which I'm not going to get into today. Um, this right here is actually a standard set by the Department of Defense. It's for setting permissions on files and services that are very complicated and very scalable. Um, if you need a much more tight knit environment, this is something you can look into to applying. But if I think for most people needs, the simple permissions I applied will accommodate a lot of needs. So I would like to thank you for watching my YouTube video and visiting thejonas.net. And I plan on doing a few more videos in the future. Um, hopefully one on MySQL, one on doing the backups for the file server, and hopefully you've watched my DNS and DHCP video. This is my way of giving back to the open source Linux community that is giving so much to the computing environment. Thank you and have a nice day.